My brothers and sisters in Christ, good evening. Good to see everybody on this eve of Thanksgiving as we celebrate all that our Lord has done for us, not only throughout this year, which I know can be hard for us to think about being thankful this year, but of course for all the thankfulness that we have for everything that our Lord has done for us and continues to do for us. Um, order of service again tonight, as it has been for the past several months, is all printed in our bulletin. Um, don't have much in the way of announcements tonight. Um, obviously, next Wednesday, we begin Advent. So COVID, COVID um, dependent on COVID, depending on where our situation is, we will continue to have service at 7 o'clock on Wednesday night throughout Advent. And again, that's all dependent on what, um, what happens. As you guys know, most of Rochester is in an orange zone, which means that our, the number of people we would be able to have in the building total would be 25. So obviously if we go to the orange zone, we'll just switch back to virtual services. So stay tuned. It will be on our website. Um, I will put it on the, on, the, um, on the recorder as well, and certainly we'll send out emails. So we'll do our best to get, to get that information out to everybody. But um, please rise and we'll begin our service. We make our beginning this evening in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God, for it is pleasant, and a song of praise is fitting. With thanksgiving. Make, Make melody, melody to our God, God on the lyre. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Let us then confess our sins to God, our gracious Father. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, creator of all things, we confess that we are indeed sinful. We have broken our fellowship with you and have turned away from one another in our thinking, speaking, and doing. We have done the evil you forbid and have not done the good you demand. We have not lived lives that are continuous of gratitude. We do repent and are truly sorry for all of our sins. Have mercy on us because of Jesus our Lord and the source of our salvation. Grant that by the working of the Holy Spirit, we live faithfully and with full thankfulness until that time when we rejoice together in your eternal presence. God has promised forgiveness to those who repent of their sins and turn to him for grace. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Lord keep you steadfast in the Holy Spirit, lead you to greater faith and obedience, grant you a spirit of ongoing thankfulness, and finally, bring you to live with him forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, we adore you as the God and Father of our Lord Jesus and of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and with the whole church on earth and all the hosts of heaven. We ascribe to you honor and blessing, thanksgiving and praise. Grant that we with thankful hearts receive your great mercies and express our gratitude not only with our lips but also in our lives as we give ourselves to your service and walk before you in holiness and righteousness all of our days. Give us faith that works in love, 
hope that never disappoints, kindness that never fails, confidence in you that never wavers, patience that does not grow weary, and courage always ready to confess Christ, that we live in your mercy and die in your peace. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And we have a catechetical section this evening as part of our, of our Thanksgiving devotion. Confessing the faith and expressing thanks are, com are completely linked together. In a small catechism, Martin Luther underscored the theme of thankfulness in his explanation of the first article of the Creed, which focused on God the Creator. So together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. What does this mean? I believe that God has made me and all creatures, that he has given me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my reason and all my senses, and still takes care of them. For all this is my duty to thank and praise, serve and obey him. He also gives me clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wife and children, land, animals, and all that I have. He richly and daily provides me with all that I need to support this body and life. For all this, it is my duty to thank and praise, serve and obey him. And he defends me against all danger and guards and protects me from all evil. All this he does only out of fatherly divine goodness and mercy, without any merit or worthiness in me. For all this, it is my duty to thank and praise, serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. And let us pray. Almighty God, your mercies are new every morning, and you graciously provide for all of our needs of body and soul. Grant that your Holy Spirit, that we may acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience all of our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And please be seated for our reading. <clears throat> our Old Testament reading this evening comes from the 8th chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. The whole commandment that I command you today you shall be careful to do, that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land that the Lord swore to give to your fathers. And you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, testing you to know what is in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And he humbled you and let you hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know. Nor did your fathers know that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothing did not wear out on you, and your foot did not swell these forty years. Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, the Lord your God disciplines you. So you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and by fearing him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs flowing out of the valleys and the hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees with honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper. And you shall eat and be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God for the land, for the good land that he has given you. This is the word of the Lord. And we speak our song, which is printed in your bulletin responsibly, verse by verse. May God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known on earth. Your saving power among all nations. 
Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. And yield its increase. God, our God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And our epistle lesson this evening comes from Paul's letter to the Philippians, um, in the fourth chapter, beginning at the sixth verse. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me Practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at length you have received, you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how, how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of being content. I can do all, uh, in, any, in any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Yet it was kind of you to share my trouble. And you Philippians yourselves know that in the beginning of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church entered an entered partnership with me in giving and receiving except you only. Even Thessalonica, you sent me help for my needs once and again. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that increases to your credit. I have received full payment and more. I am well supplied. Having received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God, and my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. To our God the Fa and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. And this evening, because the, the second epistle went so well with Thanksgiving as well, we have a second epistle reading. It is short. Our second epistle comes from, first, from the second chapter of Paul's first letter to Timothy. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God, our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. This is the word of the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. The eyes of all look to you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. Open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Alleluia. Alleluia. If you are able, please rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. Lord, 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 Lord. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. 
Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O God. And please be seated. 